The human brain has been endowed with a remarkable capacity for symbolic thought. When united with an irrepressible curiosity, it is instrumental in our survival as a species. Evidence of this capacity for abstraction and geometrical intuition can be found throughout history, from prehistoric art to modern physics. Traditionally, mathematics and physics offer profoundly different approaches to truth. The absolute truth of mathematical laws provide inspiration to unraveling the laws of the universe. But nature, through experimentation, has the last word. The Simon Center for Geometry and Physics represents the state of the art in the millennia-long interaction between physics and mathematics. In principle, we always talk about physics as an experimental science, but often to ask the questions and to analyze them, uh, or even to propose our theories, we really need to use mathematical tools. The physics are so much developed, so it's a kind of very far away from everyday experience. So when they think of some very big scale or very small scale things, they need some very much abstract way of thinking. Physics and mathematics ultimately is the same thing because we are all building some projection of the, you know, the beauty of the world around us. The only question is, you know, to make these models, how complex are the tools which we are using? and how precise do we want to be. It's always a work in progress. They're trying to accomplish different things and these lead to asking new questions. This is what leads to great science. Many of the threads left loose in geometry and algebra in ancient times were finally recovered and understood in the 19th century. Mathematicians began harnessing the extraordinarily fertile notions of symmetry and breaking the chains imposed by Euclidean orthodoxy. Adding the school represented by Hilbert, these mathematical achievements became the harbingers of two fundamental revolutions in 20th century physics, relativity and quantum mechanics. In many ways, modern theoretical physics, especially after the use of gauge theories to formulate the standard model of physics, has become a form of experimental mathematics. Heuristic arguments in quantum field theory and string theory inspire deep mathematics that in turn help us better understand the original physical problem. The Simon Center for Geometry and Physics has its own faculty carrying out research in these topics and more with near complete freedom. We basically say that do your research, it should be fundamental research, and uh, do not worry about anything else. They really know what to do themselves. You have to provide the opportunity for them to do it and uh, to get some new ideas from their colleagues. On the one hand, we have uh, the pure research. We also have uh, workshops, programs, and a lot of activities. Normally, we, we fund between 12 and maybe 20 workshops per year. And the good thing about it is that if you propose a good idea, the money and the resources are there. The centre gives maximum freedom from other duties so that one can concentrate on research and also a steady stream of people coming through who have expertise in, in all manner of different areas. It provides me with a very stimulating environment. Essentially any subject that's interesting to me, there is somebody here who is a world expert that I can talk to. Half of this building is physicists, half mathematicians roughly. Sometimes there is some spark and, 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 and people start to talk to each other. We share the same building, we go to the same seminars, we have lunch together. Everything in this place is designed to, to make every single scientific interaction as successful as possible. Frequently I sit down with a bunch of physicists and we just start chatting and I'm learning and they're learning and we're discovering connections. The center provides a place where physicists and mathematicians can meet to discuss topics of common interest, providing fertile ground for the generation of fundamentally new science. I'm a condensed matter theorist describing geometric responses of this quantum hole system. The whole condensed matter physics is based on just one equation, which is Schrodinger equation, the main equation of quantum mechanics. I mostly work on foundational questions in quantum field theory. A lot of what I'm doing now is to study the developments in that field that mathematicians have achieved, and I'm trying to see what I can borrow that's applicable to physics. I'm now working on simplex geometry and some gauge theory. I always involved in my research is something which should be called a modularized spaces, and that exists always in my mathematics. I'm interested in a certain branch of theoretical physics called gauge theory. 
obtain some interesting results. With the simplifying assumptions, you can build a model which you can understand better and better. If it doesn't really fit the observation, then you have to modify your assumptions. For the last five years or so, I've been mainly studying um, seven-dimensional manifolds with certain structures. Even if in the end it turns out that these theories don't exactly describe physical reality, they are telling us something very important about the intellectual universe, about the way different ideas fit together. What is exciting about this center is that it's too young. So in a sense, his personality is being built almost on a daily basis. The roots and the foundations have been laid. And in principle, we all expect to have a very successful future. The role of basic research in mathematics and the natural sciences is best expressed by William Blake. To see a world in a grain of sand and a heaven in a wild flower, hold infinity in the palm of your hand and eternity in an hour.